Welcome to Ace My Exams Learning. Let us get started with today's learning. Question. One of the main responsibilities of the government is to exercise legislative authority. This legislative authority is carried out at all three levels of the government. Define the term legislative authority. Legislative authority refers to the power vested in a governing body or legislature to perform several crucial functions within a political system. Firstly, it encompasses the responsibility of crafting, drafting, and enacting laws, thereby shaping the legal framework that governs a nation or jurisdiction. Secondly, legislative authority involves the critical role of overseeing and monitoring the executive branch of government, ensuring that it operates within the boundaries defined by the laws and constitution. Importantly, it often adheres to the principle of the separation of powers, where the legislator responsible for enacting laws is distinct from the executive branch responsible for their execution and the judicial branch responsible for administering justice. This separation of powers helps maintain a system of checks and balances, preventing the concentration of power within a single authority. Question. Indicate the institutions at all three levels of government that are involved in exercising legislative authority. There are three levels of government which can exercise legislative authority in South Africa. They are 1. National level. At the national level, legislative authority is exercised by the parliament, a governing body comprising elected representatives responsible for formulating, debating, and passing laws that apply nationwide. 2. Provincial level. The provincial legislature assumes a similar role at the provincial level enacting laws tailored to the specific needs of each province, with elected officials representing their constituents. 3. Local level. Lastly, at the local level, the municipal council bears the responsibility of legislative authority, focusing on creating and implementing laws that address the unique needs of the local community, spanning issues from urban planning to public services. Question. Name and briefly describe the three levels of government. The three levels of government are the national government, provincial government, and local government. 1. National government. The national government operates at the central level and governs the entire state. It is responsible for organizing and administering the country at the highest level. The national government also formulates laws and policies that bind all other forms of government. Finally, Parliament is the legislative body at the national level, with the authority to create laws that apply across the entire country. 2. Provincial Government The provincial government functions at the regional level and is the second tier of government. There are nine provincial governments in South Africa, each governing one of the country's provinces. While not entirely independent, Provincial governments can only govern within the boundaries set by the central government and provincial laws and policies must align with those at the central level. The provincial legislature, at this level, is responsible for passing laws specific to the province. 3. Local government. Local government operates at the municipal level and represents the smallest form of government. It plays a crucial role in democratic societies allowing residents of towns or cities to participate in local elections. This level provides an opportunity for ordinary citizens to manage their affairs independently. However, decisions made at the local government level must be consistent with laws and policies set by both the central and provincial governments. Question. What do you understand by the term government? Government is a system by which a state or a community is governed. It consists of legislators, administrators, and arbitrators such as courts of law and judges. Furthermore, it is made up of a body of individuals and institutions who collectively engage in the formulation and enforcement of laws specific to a particular society. In South Africa, this system is organized into three distinct levels, namely national, provincial, and local, each playing a crucial role in the overall governance of the state. At its core, the government represents the highest political institution within a state, featuring a cadre of executive political office bearers who hold responsibility for the administration 
and execution of laws. Question. The President of South Africa was sworn in as President on 15 February 2018, just two hours after he was elected unopposed by the National Assembly. The presidential election was carried out in terms of the Constitution. Explain the important role played by the President in the country. The President of South Africa plays a crucial part in various aspects of governance, as laid out below. 1. The President wields the authority to assent to bills, a crucial step in their transformation into law. This power ensures that proposed legislation aligns with the President's vision for the nation. 2. If the President deems certain aspects of a bill problematic, he can refer it back to the National Assembly for reconsideration, highlighting the President's role in the legislative process. 3. The President is responsible for convening and presiding over Cabinet meetings, fostering coordination and collaboration among government ministers. 4. The President holds the authority to appoint commissions of inquiry and ambassadors to shape the country's investigative and diplomatic efforts. 5. In the event of parliamentary disputes, the President can refer these matters to the Constitutional Court or other relevant institutions to ensure outstanding legal and constitutional issues are resolved. 6. The President manages the appointment and recognition of diplomatic officers to foster the nation's international representation and relations. 7. The President leads the negotiation and signing of international agreements to shape the country's foreign policy. 8. The President proclaims referenda, a critical step in facilitating direct public participation in decision-making processes. 9. The President also holds the authority to pardon offenders, demonstrating a role in the justice system and the exercise of executive clemency. 10. The President actively participates in the formulation and execution of national government policies, setting the direction and priorities of the nation. 11. The President appoints the Deputy President and members of the Cabinet to form the executive branch. Question. The National Assembly is one of the Houses of Parliament. Describe the Composition of the National Assembly The National Assembly, one of the Houses of Parliament in South Africa, is composed of 400 members. These members are allocated based on a dual system. Firstly, 200 seats are distributed according to the national election results, proportionate to the percentage of votes each political party receives. Secondly, an additional 200 seats are allocated to the provinces, with specific seat distributions as follows. Gauteng, 43 seats. KwaZulu-Natal, 40. Eastern Cape, 28. Western Cape, 21. Limpopo, 20. Free State, 15. Northwest, 15. Mpumalanga, 14. And Northern Cape, 4 seats. Within the National Assembly, a speaker is elected from its members to serve as the chairperson. Each political party designates a leader, known as the chief whip, and may appoint additional whips at a ratio of one whip per 8.69 members. Political parties that are too small to have a whip can attend whip meetings. And the majority party has the authority to appoint a deputy whip. Elections for these positions occur every five years, ensuring regular democratic representation within the National Assembly. Question. Describe three requirements of members of the National Assembly. Members of the National Assembly in South Africa are required to meet three key eligibility criteria. One, should be a South African citizenship. To serve in the National Assembly, individuals must be South African citizens. This requirement ensures that those participating in the legislative process have a direct connection to the nation and its interests. 2. Be qualified to vote. Members of the National Assembly must be qualified to vote in the general elections. This criterion ensures that those elected to represent constituents in the legislative body are themselves actively engaged in the democratic process and have a stake in the outcomes of elections. 3. Should take an oath or solemn affirmation. Before assuming their duties, 
members of the National Assembly are required to make an oath or solemn affirmation. This commitment serves as a formal declaration of their dedication to fulfilling their legislative responsibilities and upholding the principles of their role in the Assembly to the nation and its citizens. Question. Explain the aims of the Constitution of South Africa. The Constitution of South Africa aims to forge a democratic, just, and inclusive society as outlined below. 1. Healing Historical Divisions The Constitution of South Africa has a fundamental aim to address the scars of the past and pave the way for a society rooted in democratic principles, social justice, and basic human rights. It serves as a tool for national healing, fostering unity, and reconciliation by acknowledging historical injustices and promoting a vision of inclusivity, equality, and respect for the fundamental rights of all citizens. 2. Establishing a foundation for democratic governance and rule of law. At its core, the Constitution aspires to establish the groundwork for a democratic and open society. This involves shaping a governance model where the will of the people is central, and every citizen is equally safeguarded by the law. By setting these democratic principles as the foundation, the Constitution seeks to create a transparent, accountable, and participatory government, ensuring that the rule of law is upheld. 3. Enhancing quality of life for all South Africans. Another key aim of the Constitution is to enhance the quality of life for all South African citizens and unlock the potential of every individual. By recognizing and safeguarding social and economic rights, the Constitution endeavors to create conditions for inclusive development. This, in turn, aims to build a society where all citizens have the opportunity to prosper and contribute to the nation's overall progress. 4. Defining Citizen Government Relations The Constitution plays a crucial role in delineating the relationship between citizens and governing institutions. It establishes a framework that outlines the rights and responsibilities of individuals, as well as the powers and limitations of governmental bodies. This aim contributes to creating a balanced and accountable system of governance, ensuring that citizens are active participants in the nation's democratic processes. 5. Building a United and Sovereign Nation The Constitution envisions a united and democratic South Africa, positioning the country to rightfully take its place as a sovereign state among the family of nations. This aim reflects a commitment to national unity, self-determination, and active engagement in global affairs. It emphasizes South Africa's role as an equal member on the international stage, contributing to a peaceful and cooperative global community. 6. Serving as a system of governance principles and rules. Beyond its aspirational goals, the Constitution functions as a system of basic principles and rules according to which the country must be governed. It provides a structured framework that guides decision-making, ensuring that governance aligns with the foundational values of democracy, justice, and human rights. Additionally, the Constitution clearly outlines the powers through which governing institutions may govern, promoting transparency and accountability in the exercise of authority. Read the scenario below and answer the questions. The general elections in our country are held according to the proportional representation system. During these elections, members are elected to parliament as well, as to the provincial legislature of the nine provinces. Question. Explain the term proportional representation system. Proportional representation is an electoral system in which the distribution of seats in a legislative body is directly correlated with the level of support garnered by each political party during elections. In this system, the fundamental principle is to establish a proportional relationship between the percentage of votes a party receives and the corresponding share of seats it attains in the parliament or legislative body. For instance, if a political party secures 70% of the total votes in the national elections, the proportional representation system dictates that they should be entitled to 70% of the seats in the National Assembly. 
This connection between the votes cast and the parliamentary seats allocated ensures that the composition of the legislative body accurately reflects the diverse political preferences of the electorate. Question. Describe the important role played by the provincial legislature by using the following headings. 1. Composition of the provincial legislature. The provincial legislature typically consists of a specific number of members, ranging between 30 to 100, and their composition is determined through a proportional representation system during general elections. This ensures that the distribution of seats aligns with the level of support received by each political party. The head of both the province and the provincial legislature is the premier and is responsible for providing political leadership and direction in governing the province. Furthermore, members of the provincial legislature serve a term of office lasting five years. 2. Legislative competence of the provincial legislature. The legislative competence of the provincial legislature encompasses a broad range of crucial matters that significantly influence the governance and development of the province. The key areas over which the provincial legislature holds authority are agriculture, cultural affairs, education, excluding universities of technology and universities, health services, housing, language policy, police and protection services, public transport, tourism, local government, and environmental issues. Additionally, the legislature is empowered to discuss and pass bills related to gambling, except lotteries, public works, regional planning and development, traditional leaders, and urban and rural development. Question. Describe the important powers and functions of the Premier as the head of the executive authority in provincial administration. The Premier in a provincial government has a wide array of responsibilities that are essential for the effective governance of the province. They include 1. Appointment and dismissal of executive council members. As the head of the executive authority in provincial administration, the Premier holds the crucial power to appoint and dismiss members of the executive council. This helps to shape the provincial government's direction and ensures that the executive team aligns with the Premier's policy objectives. 2. Convening executive meetings. The Premier is responsible for convening and presiding over executive meetings. This power enables the Premier to gather key decision makers, discuss policy matters, and coordinate the implementation of government initiatives. 3. Assenting to and signing provincial bills. The Premier plays a pivotal role in the legislative process by having the authority to approve and sign provincial bills into law. This power reflects the government's stance on various issues and its commitment to enacting laws that align with its policy agenda. 4. Referring bills to the provincial legislature for further consideration. In instances where the Premier deems it necessary, he may refer a bill back to the provincial legislature for further consideration. This function provides a mechanism for reviewing and refining proposed legislation, ensuring that it undergoes thorough scrutiny and aligns with the broader interests and needs of the province. 5. Referring bills to the Constitutional Court for a decision on constitutionality. The Premier holds the authority to refer bills to the Constitutional Court for a determination of their constitutionality. By seeking the Court's input, the Premier contributes to maintaining the legal integrity of the provincial legislative process. To access more learning and exam preparation materials, go to www.acemyexams.coza. This link is also in the video description below. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, and be the first to know when we upload new videos.